I come from the future. And I'm here to tell you that the PS5 is great. The game's great. Woo! Yeah, that lame attempt at a joke uh, was brought on due to the PS5 reveal earlier today. Uh, awkwardly, I was hosting the stream and watching it and in the chat and everything while I was at work doing my best to look busy while I'm trying to see stuff as I'm clack clack clacking on the keyboard. Much like that. It was fine. It was a, a tight little, little over an hour per uh, 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 little package deal. It was always gonna be about, oh, here's some games got coming up. And some of them look good. Some of them look good. It was, it was an okay thing. The whole thing was okay. It was an okay thing. And then, as I predicted, the uh, the the uh, the box reveal, and uh, as I've always said, I'd rather design wise in and really design wise in any tech company in any tech products. I'm always going to say, I'd rather you go bold, go weird, take a risk, and. Uh, it's, it's whatever, because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, people are going to buy it or not. I don't think anyone's going to buy it or not buy it based on the looks of something. I mean, let's be fucking real. No one's going to, there's not, I'm going to be dramatic here. There's not a single consumer out there that's going to be like, all right, I was deciding between getting <coughs> an Xbox, whatever it's called, and a PS5. And you know what? It's tipping me over the edge is I'd rather this box look like this way than this thing. Like, I, I uh, of course, again, being dramatic, of course, there's going to be someone out there that is like that. And it's just like, whatever. But uh, speaking from my own experience, right? Like, if I was to buy it, I'm gonna buy it not because of its aesthetical look, and then its looks is just a, se a, a secondary, tertiary like thing to acquiring said box. It's, it's gonna look how it looks, and I don't care if it looks garish and is out of place with everything I have, or it's whatever. Like I've had the launch ps4 since launch and it's just a black uh, slanty box and so it's very not doesn't stand out at all especially with things that i have right now and so it's just like all right cool but if i'm just closing my eyes and i'm imagining that i have a ps5 there and it's white and it's not dark and it's against the dark entertainment thing that i currently have in my dark uh, router and the dark old dusty PS3 that I still have here for some reason hooked up to stuff like I don't care it'll stand out but I'm not like ooh one way or the other I'm not like ooh I'm glad it stands out and I'm not like ooh it's ugly like I don't care I, I don't, it's whatever. like I said when it comes to the tech thing I'd rather companies design wise make interesting choices just because I'm for interesting and flashy. It's the same way I feel about sports uniforms. I'd rather you try and risk and try something interesting than just be boring. Just, just fucking be interesting. Be interesting. You have a chance to be interesting, be interesting. It's a mo motto for life. Um, but I don't wanna spend too much time talking about the, the whole thing. I, like I said, about what I expected, and it was an okay hour and well, however many minutes of my work day where I was like, okay, cool. I'm excited for a few of the games. Something I don't give a shit about. I'm, I'm making like gestures. 
Hopefully the sound conveys what gestures I'm making. I'm still way more infinitely interested, especially now with the reveal of an all digital version, what the prices are going to be. I think revealing that there is a diskless, like diskless drive uh, version, a digital version. Uh, I think a reveal of that more points to the original one with the disk drive or just the both versions being on the heftier price side. I think that's something that 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 again, we don't know the price, but I think if you reveal, oh, we've got two SKUs and one of them we're not doing much, but we're taking out the disk drive, which will save some money, I guess. Um, I think reveals a bit that they're prepping. <laughs> Again, something I've said in the past. I think they're prepping and they're hedging. They're like, oh, uh, if people are like, if the. Because if, if it comes out as an expensive piece of hardware, of course, there's going to be some people being like, good, if I buy. Uh, a tech thing that's going to last for years. I want it to be on the pricier side so it doesn't get just fucking outpaced in a year or two. Like that's the the common threat or threat, the common idea for things like that. Like oh, if you you're future proofing a bit more if you're paying a heftier price. And a lot of the tech specs that have been talked about, there's been people that are like, this is going to be. Don't be shocked. It's a bit expensive. Like PS4, they did. I mean, remember, 599 US dollars. That was the PS3, right? 599. It wasn't 499. 599. I think it was 599. That's the meme. Um, the whole thing was the PS4 was great because when they revealed, oh, it's 399. People were like, oh fuck, brah. That was good. I think. I think the PS5 has to be a bit more extensive. Now, the question's going to be, and this is where my actual interest is, how much money can you actually reduce by just on a new piece of hardware like the PS5 with all the other tech specs in it just by what seems to be that they just made it a bit slimmer by reducing the disk drive? can't be that much money that you're reducing it by unless they're taking out something else and they're able to save on other components by removing that but i don't know like how much uh, how much can you save while it also not just being so minuscule that it's almost laughable to bring it up because it has to be like or how it has to be at least big enough for it to be a, like a reason to bring it up because if it, I'm making up numbers here, all right? Let's say whatever the prices are, they're within, this is just purely to make a point here. Well, let's say the difference was between $20 by removing a disk drive. Now that's not gonna be it. I'm saying this now. And it's not, this is, again, I'm making a point here. If it was $20, then it's laughable. It's like you you market it and you're like, hey, you can get the, the disk one or for $20 cheaper of this already multi hundred dollar thing it's gonna be laughable if it's only like a $20 difference, right? Now you get to go, okay, so then the most next increment would be like $50. You're like, all right, you can save $50 potentially if you buy the diskless drive, the one without the disk drive. And you're like, okay, that makes a bit more sense. But still even 50 is almost like uh, not much. But then once you get past 50, right? Once you get past $50, then you're like, well, are, can you really save that much money by just removing the disk drive? Like if it's like a hundred dollar difference and you're like, wow, you've saved a hundred dollars by just removing. Like, I'm curious what the actual difference is gonna be between those. Uh, that's like the thing I'm interested in. So the points I'm trying to make here <laughs> is that I think by revealing a version where you're like, ah, oh, this skew, you don't have to, you, it's all digital, baby. Like, I think they're 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 gearing us on the path that it's gonna be a hefty price tag, <laughs> and they're like, we know there's gonna be some people that balk at the price. It's like, all right, well, here's your little digital box thing. 
also for some reason when they reveal both i'm like oh for some reason that in my head it made me want to think more like they're gonna do like a price tag where it's like a couple hundred and fifty dollars so i keep thinking or like they wouldn't mind doing that so price wise my final bet until i hear something else is gonna be I can't even commit. I want to say the, with the disk drive at minimum 500 <laughs> and maybe again cuz what I was saying earlier 550 maybe. Maybe they're like what's we could get away with 550. I think if you went higher than that, if you got 600, people are going to be like, "Fuck, man. 599 US dollars meme all over again." <laughs> and I don't think they want to go that high. I think they hit 600 and they know Everyone's gonna be saying that, and that's just not a narrative you wanna have to deal with if you're Sony, right? Right, so 550 at the highest, I'm guessing you can't get below 500. So in my head, I'm thinking, because if you go like 499, it just seems ridiculous. It doesn't seem possible. So I'm saying five, 550, and then like, how much can removing a disk drive be? Like, 450? 400 if we're crazy 400 for the digital version because that would be marketing they'd be like oh you paid 400 for the ps4 back at launch if you want to pay 400 for the next box fucking get just the digital thing and maybe they can squeak it out at 400 i was hearing something i was hearing something be like people saying well if they sold just the all digital then they know any game you buy at that point is coming sh theoretically straight from sony like you're almost guaranteed unless you buy like digital codes from amazon although i think they don't do that anymore i think that was the whole thing they stopped you can't buy digital codes off amazon and stuff that was like a new story a while back whatever if you just get digital right then they can they still charge you 60 dollars for a video game but they're not having to cut, take a cut from the box stores from your your game stops or your targets or whatever so if they're like if they're like, we can sell these cheap digital ones and maybe lose money on selling the box, but every time they buy a game that we're getting all the whole $60 or whatever. That would be the only thing I could think of. If they're like willing, fuck, if, they, if they're willing to make that much of a gamble, they could be like, are all, are all digital ones 350 or something? Because we know you're going to be buying all the games at $60 straight from us. You can't buy a disc off at GameStop you can't buy a used copy either so when you buy it every time you buy a game we're getting the full cut you know obviously split amongst developer and everything but you see what I'm saying retailers aren't getting a cut of that they're not taking their cut so then you start making up money from taking potentially a loss from your digital version that's what I think about all that but it's whatever. It's interesting. I think the reveal of a digital version is the most interesting thing I saw today. Just because then I'm like, all right, it keeps my mind like, okay, what's... It just makes me think that they think they know that it's going to be a hefty price thing. And I'm like at the point in my life where I find like... I've always said like the last several years, like I find the marketing of the shitty games industry and like the marketing and the actual just industry like goings on like way more interesting than sometimes games themselves but it's whatever to the actual game for the night <laughs> after enough talk of that um the uh i checked the trophy list because i was curious how much more of this game there is and if i'm to believe the trophy list and if there's not anything completely crazy going on i think there's only two more in-game hours which is crazy to think we've uh we've we've played so much and i don't want the adventure to end so yeah two more hours in-game hours
which what may end up being like five or six more actual game hours. I don't fucking know. Also, I'm totally expecting that something crazy could happen in the game and or, or I'm not to believe the trophy list. Also, I think I, I noticed this only when I started working on the archives of the videos. Um, look at fucking Minorikawa and his dirty picture. He's dusty. He's got, he's got some smidges on his face and jacket. I like how they changed the little pictures. Like back with Maria back in there. Twice over, she changed outfits and lost the costume. And now Minora Kawa is dirty on the verge of death. Alright, so similar type of stream tonight. We'll probably try to hit the around two hours plus I mean minus whatever we had just did for me to rant about the box um, so 11 my time probably around whatever it seems like a good stopping point and then we'll go from there the question the question we have a lot of good starting points like a lot a lot shit went down at the end of the last part Let's start with Minorikawa. I think cannon-wise, the closest to the explosion. I mean, Maria was pretty close. Or not Maria. I guess... Achi was pretty close. I said Maria, but I meant... Um, Hitomi um, was really close, but got saved by Kanan. Minorikawa needed to get back to the editing office right away. But despite the urgency, he barely stumbled along. He was swaying on his feet, only half aware of where he was even going. Damn. No, no, this is all some sick joke. He just couldn't accept that Toyama was dead. He let out a lifeless sigh, a cynical smile crept onto his face. The man always did insist on having his own way, but killing himself? Back when he was still a novice reporter, Minorikaw had written a piece about a middle school girl who'd committed suicide. Yeah, the school was made, had made a statement denying that bullying had been a factor, so most of the media had reported that she had suffered a nervous breakdown over entrance exams. A period of mental illness manifesting as panic disorder, stress-induced anxiety, or the like, the term is commonly used to refer to serious health issues such as schizophrenia or bipolar disorder, manic depression as well as the buildup of more minor stresses as part of everyday life. Because it is so broadly and vaguely defined, it is generally avoided in psychiatric contexts. Something about the case had kept nagging at him. Had her death really been a suicide? The more people he interviewed about the incident, the more his doubts grew. The city news editor, however, would not allow him to conduct a follow-up investigation. And the reason why was simple. This was the sort of thing that happened every day. They couldn't waste time in a case that was already on the books. It was more important for a reporter to find news stories than to squander time engrossed in a case that was old news. Noriko understood the editor's decision well enough, but that didn't mean he had to like it. He'd been sulking up on the roof, slowly nursing a cigarette, when the paper's local news copy editor, Toyama, happened to drop by. At a newspaper, an employee who evaluates the quality and suitability of reporters copying coverage, effectively the boss of a group of reporters. However, the copy editor typically works under a section editor who has the final say about what makes the page. A middle management position, cop between upstart reporters and an angry section chief. Did they say no to the follow-up interviews? Tom asked. About that girl's suicide? The name of the girl who killed herself was Chiaru Fuyatsuki. After reading her diary, Norikawa became convinced it wasn't an ordinary suicide. Six years from now, Norikawa will run into a certain teacher, 
an investigation into the student's death will be reopened, but that's another story for another time. Oh, that would be so cool if they did like a sequel to this game ever. Maybe they did, I'm just unaware. Yeah, Norikawa expelled a plume on his smoke, of his smoke along with his sigh. Nothing tastes quite as bad as a cigarette when he was down in the dumps. So what are you going to do? I'm not going to do anything, Norikawa said. Editor told me no. Oh, editor said not to. You sound like a child. The rebuff made Norikawa's temper flare. There are other interviews to do. I want to follow up on this, but there isn't any time. Smack, you dumbass! Chema hauled off, hold off and hit him right across the face. What happened to I write what I feel in my heart? That's the one thing I refuse to back down on. What happened to the guy who used to bitch at me like that? Chama's words hit their mark with painful precision. The interviews aren't over until you have what you need. No, you refuse to let them be over. You go after the truth no matter what anyone tells you. Isn't that what being a journalist is all about? Minoraka was scowled in, char in chagrin. Chagrin! Chagrin! Not chargin. The man was exactly right. Until you have what you need. Those words had stuck with Minorikawa ever since. In fact, he'd quit the paper to become a freelancer because he couldn't do his job the way he wanted while trapped in that hierarchy. I like his socks. Now he wondered, what if Toyama hadn't killed himself, but instead been the victim of a terrorist attack? But after considering an idea for a moment, he thought bitterly, so what? Reasons and the details hardly mattered at this point. What mattered was that Toyama was dead. Nurikawa sat down and hit listlessly and stared up at the sky. The blank swath of blue made him feel all the more worn out. Just what had all this day's running around been for? He felt so empty, so hollowed out by loss. All his motivation had drained away. He had no idea what he should do next. Hell yeah, Minorikawa. Hey! Minoru Minorikawa, what should you do? He tried to listen to his inner voice. You forgot your passion. You need to get that back. Yeah, that was his only option, really. He needed to turn back the clock to reclaim that fire that used to burn inside him. And he knew just how to do that. Before he could, however, a young man stumbled, ac stumbled across his path, taking a nasty fall on the pavement. Ow! Oh, damn, that hurts. The youngster scrambled back to his feet and turned to Minora Kawa with a snarl. What are you looking at, pal? The young man clutched a piece of timber like a club. There's a nasty gleam in his eyes. I'm not looking at anything, Minora Kawa sighed. I just happen to be looking in your direction. Shut your yap. Apologize, bitch. Now. The punk raised his cudgel. What for? You tripped me, man. Ain't you gonna apologize for that? Kid had stumbled all, to, all on his own, but was probably too embarrassed to admit it. Guess he's got to vent his anger at someone. Listen, kid, Norikawa said. It's not my fault you're such a klutz. You know, like the pedal in a car that's got a manual transmission? Oh, that's clutch. Okay, so then like lumps of earth or clay? Those are clods, you say. Right, so then we're talking about a sort of social get-together for coffee and conversation? Huh? Ah, right, that's a clutch. Jesus. Is it when you try to fix something using stuff that isn't really meant for that purpose? That's a kludge? Okay. Thanks, game. The hell you just say to me? You got a death wish, pal? With the murderous glare, the punk advanced on him, brandishing his weapon. Hey! Norikawa said. Fucking let's do it. Don't back down, Norikawa. Bring it on! Smack. The punk swung his wooden club without a moment's hesitation. It struck Norikawa in the shoulder, knocking him off balance. Whoa, okay. Don't really bring it on. Nah, man, it's too late for takebacks. Jesus. With a nasty little grin, the young fellow swung again. Then again, catching Norikawa in the arm inside. I let Norikawa get beat up. Only when the journalist was curled up in a battered ball on the ground did the kid finally let up. Heh. <laughs> Good to get a little warm-up in before I take down that other bitch. Weapon still in hand, the punk marched off toward Dogenzaka. 
But who's he talking about? Hey, are you okay? Narukawa stirred to find Kimizuka at his side. Once again, the man had an impeccable timing. Do you need a ride somewhere, maybe, sir? The driver asked, keeping his tone polite. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I do. To the hospital. Oh, is that a bad end? Oh, shit. Well, fuck. Damn. Damn. Number 58, Pumold. A hot-headed young punk gave Norikawa a beating bad enough to send him to the hospital. Maybe our reporter friend shouldn't be quite so confrontational with this fellow. Okay, game. Okay. I just wanted to give Norikawa a chance to be a badass, okay? Sure. No, we're gonna head right back into there. Come on, game. Hey, Norikawa said. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be nice. All right, all right, I'm sorry. Getting dragged into a street fight was not what he needed right now. It's better to just apologize and be done with it. Should have shown me that kind of respect from the start, the punk shook his head, muttering under his breath. Another dumbass gotta get taught some manners. With that, the young thug, he young thug headed off in the direction of Dogenzaka. Let me smoke in peace, says Minoru Kawa. Minoru Kawa headed up to the roof of a nearby building and lit himself a cigarette. Tiny tendrils of white smoke drifted lazily up into the blue sky. As his eyes tracked the twisting movements of the smoke, memories of Toyama and the newspaper days played through his mind. Practically any time the two men needed to speak to one another, they'd gotten into a heated argument on the spot. Norikawa cherished his subjective viewpoints, while Toyama insisted on objective, objectivity for the readership. Neither shy, shied away from vigorous headbutting. Once the articles were on the page and out the door, it was all water under. Oh, shit. Mm, early on. Great. Uh, it was all water under the bridge. It's definitely getting to the end of the week here. Felt almost like the referee calling no side at the end of a rugby match. The phrase called out by the referee to signal the end of a rugby match refers to the fact that no side has position of the ball, allowing the two teams to part on sportsmanlike terms. The truth was that, somewhere deep down, Norikawa got where Toyama was coming from. Without objectivity, readers didn't get the facts. Without subjectivity, they didn't get any emotional impact. Norikawa had to create uh, credit Toyama for helping him become a full-fledged reporter. Mr. Toyama was in there. It was a suicide. Norikawa let Chiaki's words drain from his mind, overriding them with one irresistible fact truth. The truth was in anything and everything. The truth could not be forgotten. The truth was all that remained in the end. Norikawa smirked grimly at himself. He'd come up here hoping to reignite his journalistic passion, but instead the emptiness within him had only grown. Yeah, guess it's gonna take a while. He sparked up a second cigarette. Okay. Okay. A respectable keep out. All right, which of these four? You know what? Let's give it to Asawa. I don't want to know how people feel. All I want to know is what viruses feel. I prefer viruses because they make no move to encroach on me from the other side of my microscope. They leave me free to let my thoughts wander as I wish. And while it may be true to say I understand viruses, I have never been able to understand my fellow humans. I don't know them. 
I don't know a single fundamental thing about them. With Snaka dead, trying to use the backup passwords for the fingerprint scanner had become a hopeless endeavor. The only remaining means of gaining entry to the storage area was to issue an emergency unlock request to the electronic lock manufacturer. And in order to do that, they needed approval from the six members of the board of directors. Returning to his study, I saw a call to Makino's, Makino's personal cell phone. What is it? Makino said gruffly as soon as he picked up. Asawa informed him of the situation, including Tanaka's death, and the fact that Maria was infected. The news left Makino at a loss for words. Please, Asawa begged. You need to hold an emergency board meeting. Makino was silent for a few moments. I'm afraid I can't do that. Why not? Are you just going to sit by and let my daughter die? Asawa raged. And not just her. If Maria goes symptomatic... Maria goes symptomatic. That was still only an if, but Asawa was reluctant to put his fears into words. If she goes symptomatic, the Uo virus will sweep through all of Tokyo. I realize that, Makino replied, but one of the board members is overseas on business. Holding a meeting is impossible. Despite the gravity of the situation, he sounded astoundingly nonchalant. Asawa couldn't back down now. There must be some other option, like a web conference or something. That doesn't help us if we can't get in touch with him, Makino huffed. He went missing a few days ago in the middle of his business trip. Oh. The head of Akoshi Pharmaceuticals New York branch has been missing since April 25th, 9 p.m. local time. There have been no demands for a ransom, and so the New York Police Department is investigating the possibility of some other form of foul play. Huh. Sal is almost too appalled to be angry. That's the most ridiculous lie I've ever heard. Would you like to speak to my on-site contact if you don't believe me? This was like arguing with a child. If Makino was deliberately working against him, he'd never know if the disappearance was real or not. In that case, can you please appoint a representative in his stead? Asawa pleaded. Selecting a representative is a complicated process. Even if we started right now, it would take it would take until sometime tomorrow afternoon to complete. Tomorrow afternoon? By then it would be too late for any of this to matter. Sir, can't you see how absurd the things you're saying are? What would you have me do? Makino barked. These are the realities of corporate politics. I understand, sir. You will do nothing for my daughter. That's what you're saying. That's not what I'm saying, Makino replied. Look, I'll see what I can do to appoint a representative more quickly. He hung up. His tone had suggested that waiting for an appointee wouldn't be a terribly hopeful prospect. I have no more allies, Sala thought. All I have left now are foes. Um. Uh, so I'm just going to have to get the info by myself. That's weird right now. That is, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He couldn't count on anyone anymore. So I was just going to have to get the antiviral by himself. Sonaka might be dead. But there still must be some way to get that lock open. Open. Taking extra care to avoid the notice of the detectives, Saul snuck out of the house and headed for the garage. Whoa! Okay, okay, okay. Two keepouts! Down to just three knuckleheads. Let's go, Kano. Arriving back at the Shibuya precinct, Kano hurried to the interrogation room. With the investigation currently on hold, he knew that taking any official action would be tricky. If he was going to break through the stalemate, he was going to need Tatsuno's help. The abduction, the ransom, the Itachi case relay, Maria's release, and then Tanaka's death. Maybe Tosno would be able to figure out how all these elements were related. But first, Kano needed to check something for himself. Tosno would never have let Al Karwan go free. Kano needed the prisoner to set the record straight. 
Alcaron sat in the precinct interrogation room looking brazen and cocksure. Cocksure. Great, great word. One glance at his face and Kano was reminded of what had happened to Sasyama. Fresh anger smoldered at the edges. Smoldered at the edges of his mind. There were two detective... There were two detective... Is the detective really the way to say plural detective? Already in the room. It seems he wasn't made privy to the details, one of them told Kano. Sounds like they were following orders. Carrying that Itachi case around, the other added. Kano sat down across from Alcarowin. There's something I'd like to ask you, he said. We were just paid to do a job. I don't know anything more than that. His Japanese was imperfect, but he understood the language well enough. Tell me, how did you manage to escape from Detective Tatsuno? Escape? I didn't. Faint smile came to Alcarowin's lips. He let me go free. Liar! Detective Tatsuno would never do that. Connor slammed the desk with his fist. I didn't have handcuffs on, did I? He took them off for me. This had to be a lie. It's not like there weren't any other ways to remove a pair of handcuffs. After he took off the handcuffs, Alcarowin continued, he pointed his gun at me. Cut the crap! Kind of grabbed the prisoner by the collar. But Alcarowan went on, unperturbed. He kept the gun pointed at me, but he didn't pull the trigger. So that's when I ran. Why would Detective Tofno want to shoot you? Because I saw him. Saw him? Saw him do what? Let me tell you something interesting, Alcarowan said sardonically. There was that girl who was carrying the ransom, right? Kano pictured Hitomi standing anxiously beside the statue of Hachiko. That guy, Tosno, was trying to kill her. In a fit of rage, Kano drove his fist into Alcarowan's face. His cogs rushed to interpose themselves. Kano, calm down! Knocked to the floor, Alcarowan gingerly fingered his split lip. And after I gave you such good info, too? He grumbled. Detective Tosno was assigned to protect Hitomi Asawa, Kano shouted. You can't expect me to believe your rubbish. He lunged around the table, ready to throw another punch, but his fellow detectives held him back. Alcarowan looked away indifferently. It's your detective Tatsuno you should be arresting, not me. That girl's going to get killed. You need to step in line, pal, Kano bellowed. Kano, his colleague shouted. You're the one who needs to step in line. Go and cool off for a bit. I hit Kano, man. Doesn't play by the rules. Expelled from the interrogation room, Kano immediately pulled out his cell phone and called Tatsuno's number. Please pick up. He clutched his phone tight, pleading under his breath. But Tatsuno didn't answer. Kano sat down in a chair in the hallway. In the hallway in a bit of a daze. He found himself holding the present Tatsuno had gotten for his wife. I have to do something. I just don't know what I'm supposed to do. His restlessness gnawed at him like a rabid animal. Hey, Kano. He looked up to see Kuze standing beside him, his expression grave. I have an update on Zasuyama, the director began. Kano swallowed a lump in his throat. It seems the knife went in deep enough to do some organ damage. He's in critical condition. I see. Kano bit his lip hard. His handkerchief, red with Sasyam's blood, clung to the wrapping paper of Sasyam's present. Connell peeled it away carefully so as to not tear the paper un uh, beneath. Paper beneath. What's that? Asked Kuse. Sasyam had me hold on to this for him. It's a present for his wife. Ah, I see. Uh, I'm sorry, Director Kuse, for ignoring your orders. Connell's eyes remained fixed on the gift as he spoke. When you get down to it, None of this would have happened if it weren't for me. Some kind of punishment was surely headed his way for acting alone as he had. He probably wasn't getting out of this one with a simple written apology. Public servants are negligent and their duties are violate regulations. They can be punished with a warning, a formal reprimand, reduction in pay, suspension, or dismissal. In the case of a warning, in addition to the uh, remonstration from a direct supervisor, the individual 
uh, must also submit a formal letter explaining the relevant details and assuring. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, two yawns now. Assuring that it won't happen again. I was up early today, too. Let's, let's do it. But Kuze Koma shook his head. What ha happened to Sasayama isn't your fault. Don't blame yourself, he said. As far as this case goes, I've been giving quite the runaround myself. There was a rare note of vulnerability in Kuse's voice. The Harrups have barely let any information trickle my way, but they're still ordering me around nonstop. It's a real pain in the ass. Kuse fell silent, ruminating. The quiet lingered between the two men for several moments before the abrupt, uh, he abruptly spoke again. Oh, right. I'd like to get your opinion on something. So, Mamoru Tanaka, who we found in the minivan, you know? What you think? Should we ought to maybe release his name to the media? Because they had slipped into his childish register. He was clearly exhausted. After dealing with the kidnappers' baffling actions, too much meddling from the higher-ups, even a veteran like Kuze is just beat. But that's not the only reason for his exhaustion. Kuze has a brother six years his senior, who despite being nominal, uh, nominally mature, refuses to get a real job and shows no inclination to settle down with the family. He walks around town day after day dressed like a hippie, treating passerby to songs he's written, because he has been worrying about his shiftless brother for years now. The guy's become a chronic source of consternation. A little bit. Uh, Kano was thrown by the question. It's a rare thing for the director to seek an opinion from a mere junior detective. Feels like there's something not too normal about one of Kenji Asawa's subordinates dying, Kuze went on. Kano had had the same thought. This felt too intentional to be a coincidence. So here's the question. Should I get the media involved and try to rush for a resolution, or should I be more cautious? What would you do? About releasing the name? Kano asked. That wasn't a such simple thing to answer. There were so many factors to consider. A tired small came to Kuse's face. Don't think about it so hard. This is just so I have a point of reference. Tell me what your gut says. You know what? Pick and B. Pick and B! I think we should hold back for now. Hmm? Kuse rumbled. We still don't know if... Memora Tanaka was murdered, or if he committed suicide. Kano pointed out, we should at least wait until we know that much. This case had so many loose ends that could lead to in dangerous directions. It would pay. <sighs> I can't hold him back. The yawns are trying to take over. Yawns. J-H-O-N-S. Yawns. It would pay to be as prudent as possible. Maybe I'll end early tonight. <laughs> Maybe I'll get some sleep. Kuze paused for a moment and thought, then nodded. I see what you mean. All right, then. Then, without another word, he headed back toward the conference room. On the TV, the governor's press conference was still going on. I've just requested that each of the railroad companies, starting with JR, stop running trains through Shibuya Station until further notice. As far as the roads go, Route 246 has already been closed to traffic. The executive looked pale as he spoke to the crowd. Is there any possibility of a bioterrorist attack? What about the people who are still in Shibuya? The reporters unleashed a barrage of questions. The governor's face scrunched up. As I've already made clear, this is not a complete blockade. Because modern Japan does not have a system for enacting martial law, there are few ways that the government could effectively quarantine Shibuya. In case of potential viral infection, the infectious disease law allows for the city to be partitioned into areas of restricted movement. If the authorities do not want to acknowledge the existence of the top secret of a virus, however, taking such an action would be rather tricky legally. There's nothing to stop anyone from leaving Shibuya on foot. Isn't that what you're describing de facto martial law? Isn't what you're describing de facto martial law? Spat one reporter. Of course not, the governor snapped. You should be well aware that martial law is illegal. I couldn't declare it even if I wanted to. If you wanted to. So this is a biorist issue then. Bioterrorist issue then. I never said anything of the sort. The press conference was devolving into chaos. Connor was unsurprised given the circumstances. Still, everyone was doing their best insofar as they knew how. So why not me? Kano thought. It doesn't matter what I do. I just want to be doing something. 
just letting time tick by without trying to take action was more than he could bear. Kano. Uh. Damn, all these, all these are things I want to do. Uh, I want to pick A, but I feel like if you don't pick these, then you're kind of like an asshole. <sighs> Fuck. Began to worry about Rumi and decided to give her a call. The phone rang several times before it went to voicemail. The fact that she hadn't picked up made Kano all the more anxious. He was still staring at his phone when he got a call of his own. When he peered at the incoming call display, his heart nearly stopped. There was Tatsuno's name. Connell quickly pressed the button to accept the call. Detective Tatsuno? Detective Tatsuno, is that you? There was a whole mountain of things Connell wanted to ask. Just what had Tatsuno been doing this whole time? Why had he let all Karawan go free? And what had happened to Itomi? But while he was trying to decide what question to pose first, Tatsuno spoke. I've secured Maria Asawa. What? The word came out as a startled gasp. Detective Tatsuno, you have to bring her here. Uh, you have to bring her here. ASAP. Right now, she's- Wait! Does that mean Detective Tatsuno is dude with Kane? Dude with Kane is Detective Tatsuno? Did I just piece that together? I mean, it's, it seems kind of obvious now, unless it's a fake out. But like, we haven't known that until now, right? We haven't been led this way yet. Dude with Kane, because we've always just known him as guy with Kane and gun. But is he De Detective Tatsuno? Uh, right now, she's Tatsuno cut him off. You need to bring Hitomi Asawa to my location at once. Hitomi Asawa? Yes. I heard over the wireless that the man from the U.S. Embassy had her in custody. Kano hadn't been listening to the most recent wireless traffic. Apparently, Stanley had managed to find Hitomi. But what was Tatsuno getting at here? Wait, hold on. What for? I mean, why do you need me to bring Hitomi Asawa to you? There's no reply. Detective Tatsuno, answer me, please. Tatsuno replied as if he hadn't heard Kano's questions. There's an office building in Nan Pidai, Na Na Nan Pidai, called South Hill. I'll be waiting for you on the rooftop. If you don't bring her, I'll kill Maria. <laughs> With that grisly warning, he hung up. Kano's hand went limp. His phone slipped from his grasp and fell to the floor. The fuck? Fuck, you know. Connell went to South Hill and Nan Pei Dai alone. The building takes its name from a rough translation of Nan, Nan Pei Dai. The name of the area where it is located. The official name is South Hill Building, but since this is awkward to say, it is frequently shortened. He hadn't brought Hitomi, as Tosno had demanded, nor had he reported the situation to Kuze. First, he wanted to meet with Tosno and find out what was going on. He took the elevator to the 8th floor. After that, he had to take the stairs to the rooftop. As he made his way up to the steps, up the steps, he tried to imagine what Tatsuno might want with Hitomi. He hadn't noticed anything suspicious about the senior detective in the lead up to the stakeout at the scramble. Tatsuno had seemed like the same man Kano had always revered. So why was he doing this? Kano couldn't think of a reason. Reaching the top of the staircase, he at last stepped out into the open roof. Onto the open roof. Open roof. The time for half-baked conjecture was past. Connor would say his doubt would lay his doubts at Tatsuno's feet. Then, soon enough, everything would become clear. Inwardly, Connor did his best to convince himself of that. A warm breeze blew against his cheek. 
He took around. Uh, he took a look around, but saw no sign of Tatsuno. Detective Tatsuno, where are you? Getting no response, we began to walk around the rooftop, calling out several more times. It's Kano. I've come as you asked. Where's Satomi Asawa? Kano whirled around when he heard the voice behind him. Whoa! Yeah! Guy with cane! Yeah! Tatsuno stepped into view from behind a water tank. He led with him a young woman, bound and blindfolded. Why didn't you bring her? He growled. Kano stared in shock. Detective Tatsuno, why are you doing this? Is that really Maria? Maria! Oh, no jumping. Tatsuno responded by removing the young woman's blindfold. With her blindfold removed, Maria slowly opened her eyes. Then, as she gazed past Kano, a panicked look crossed her face. Ah! She shot out her arm to point. Kano whirled around in surprise. Holy shit! There was a man on the roof of the building across the way who looked like he was getting ready to jump. Is that fucking... Minoru Kawa, he's not ready to jump. No, he's just having a, a puff puff. Why now? Connor thought to himself, but he couldn't just stand idly by, wa idly by while someone committed suicide. He felt a pang of disgust when he saw Tosano take in the situation with an indifferent glance, but make no move to help. Detective Tosano, I'll be right back, Connor exclaimed. We can finish this after. Without waiting for an answer, he raced for the other building. The fuck? When he got to the second rooftop, the man was still there, staring down at the ground below. Don't do anything rash, Kano warned, hurrying toward him. When the man gave no response, though, Kano quickly halted. The stranger was still several meters away. Kano braced himself, ready to lunge for the man if necessary. Uh, let's not be hasty. Nobody's going to be happy if you jump. Still, the man said nothing, simply gazing out at the sky. Surely he could hear Kano now. The detective continued, keeping his voice low and conversational. I've got a co-worker. He's one of the most absurdly devoted husbands you can meet. All he does is brag about his wife. The man continued to ignore him. He was stabbed in the belly earlier today. He's in the hospital right now, on death's door. He was happy, but now his life might get snatched away from him anyway. Still, the man appeared unmoved. It was as if the words weren't even reaching him. Don't you think it's a waste to just go and throw your own life away? Kano waited for the man to respond. The stranger took a purposeful stride away from the fence toward the roof's edge. Stop! Don't do it! The man unflinchingly stepped out toward empty air. What the fuck? No! Kano sprang forward, somehow managing to grab hold of the stranger's wrist. The fuck? He yanked the man back from the edge, getting only a blank stare in response. Don't go wasting your life like this! Ordinarily, Kano would have stayed and uh, talked until he was sure this guy's death wish had passed. But there wasn't time for that right now. Maria was in just as much danger at that very moment. Whipping out his handcuffs, he shackled the man to the fence. What? I promise I'll come back. Please, just stay alive for a few minutes longer, okay? Connor left the man staring in bewilderment and raced back to the South Hill building. What the fuck is going on? When he got back to the roof, no one was there. Connor immediately tried to call Tatsuno on his cell, but the call didn't go through. Tatsuno must have powered off his phone. Damn it! Where did you go, detective? He needed to hear what Tatsuno had to say. He still had no idea what was really going on, or what the grim truth might be. It seemed he had just lost his chance to find er uh, lost his chance to find out. In desperation, Kano rushed from the building. But in his frantic search of the area, he saw no sign of either Tatsuno or Maria. Later, a precinct wide manhunt failed to discover where the two had gone. Oh shit. Uh from that day forward, Kano was empty inside carrying out his duties as a detective with bleak detachment. It's the, the the ending is gonna be like, oh you gotta go switch over to Minora Kawa and make sure he's not walking towards the edge. Number fifty three lost sight of Maria and Tatsuno. 
Kano caught sight of a man about to commit suicide. It was Minorikawa. He couldn't ignore the situation and impulsively rushed to the rescue, but lost track of Top Snow and Maria as a result. If Minorikawa hadn't turned up on that rooftop, Kano would have been able to focus on his primary mission. Ah, uh, yes, blame Minorikawa. Of course. Of course. I assume that I could have. This was a jump to there. Probably to have a jump to here. Probably, probably, probably. And of course, these two untouched stories. Um. I'm gonna actually end it here now, very relatively soon, stream wise. Um. As you could hear, I did three yawns in a row. And I don't necessarily want to be playing and trying to read while I'm getting sleepy. Uh, I think uh, end of week is massively getting to me sleep-wise. Um, so we'll call it a bit early tonight. I could even tell like there's a uh, just like a couple pages back there's like an ending of a sentence where I just completely slurred it and I was like, I just, in my head I was like, oh that sounded terrible, but let's just keep going with it. Um, so yeah. We'll end here. Um, but like I said, there's not too much maybe left to this game. Which is crazy to think that all this might get wrapped up in the this hour and the next hour in game. Um, so yeah, we'll call it here. Uh, wrapping it up. We haven't done this in a while. Followers on Twitch are really nice. That's twitch.tv slash bubmanxiv. Uh, you can watch archives of past streams at youtube.com slash the bubmanxiv is the URL. You can just search for it as well. I believe in your internet prowess. Um, Twitter for go live notifications and other shit. It's just at Bubman 14 xiv in Roman numerals. Uh, we're about one week away from The Last of Us Part 2, which almost for surely I'll be streaming. So that'll be next, not tomorrow Friday, but a week from tomorrow Friday. Uh, full play of The Last of Us the first was done for me back last October, which equally feels like it was only like two months ago and also a million years ago. Uh, so that's on YouTube if you want to see that. I do the full play of The Last of Us and the DLC in like a part or two. I think I did the DLC in one sit down because it's only like this three hours or something. Uh, and that was my first time actually playing the DLC. Uh, but yeah, that's all there in a nice little playlist if you want to go watch that and get caught up for next week on Friday. Very excited for that game. Uh, I think it should be a fun experience for all. Um, not sure yet if there will be a stream tomorrow night. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe it'll just be a drum stream? I don't know. Uh, almost for sure, though, a stream Sunday, Saturday, early morning. Feet to the fire. Finishing, uh, Destroy All Humans 2. Knocking that out. That'll be done. Well, something horrible happens between now and Saturday morning. And I can't do it for whatever reason. Who knows? Uh, and then I don't know what the rest of the weekend will be look like. Uh, turn on notifications on Twitch and we'll see what we're doing for the rest of the weekend, potentially. Um, I'm going to get ready for bed. I'm going to just maybe push live maybe on like a, an archive video or something. Because I've, I've, I know I've gotten like two or three now uh, on back that needs to go up. Um, also, should just say, uh, I'd been meaning to say this sometime tonight, um, just cause I was reflecting on the streams and everything. Um, obviously we're coming to some kind of ending in this. Shro Humans 2 is being finished and wrapped up. Uh, I've almost platinumed off stream Final Fantasy 7 Remake, which is dope as hell. Um, and then of course The Last of Us Part 2 in about a week and a day. I'm curious... If anyone watching 
either live or archived or whatever, a million years from now. Because maybe I'll still be alive a million years from now, who knows. Um, and you have things or ideas about either games or types of games or anything that you want me to play on stream. Let me know, I'm open to hearing it. Um, I was thinking about this. I mean, past The Last of Us Part Two, I've got some ideas about things I wanna play and do for the channel. But like I said, I'm up for hearing suggestions. Um, like, do you want me to play more games like this? Do you want to do more story things? Do you want me to do more multiplayer fucking weird things? I mean, I, I if there was a big want for that, then I'd do it. But that's just not my general thing I would want to do on stream. Um, but what types of games, or what games in general, if you have like certain types or specific games? Because um, I'm open to hearing that. So you can ever on many platforms message me. You can. You can do it on a live stream. You can do it in the comments of the videos. You can, if you're cool enough to have my phone number, you can text me. It's like it's four people in this world have my cell phone number. So one of those four people, you can text me. You can slide into my DMs and be like, hey, play something. And I'll be like, oh, cool. Someone slid into my DMs. Let me check that. Oh, they're just telling me to play Pac-Man. Right, that'll do it for the stream. Uh, have yourself a nice Friday. Finish the week strong. And uh, I'll potentially see you tomorrow night. But if not, if I'm if, if I'm instead doing something else with my Friday night, I'll be back Saturday morning. Till then. <laughs>